Joining us now is Dr. Michael Osterholm, Director for the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy at the University of Minnesota. Doctor, it's good to see you again. Good morning. Thank you. It's good to be with you. So let me ask you about what's happening there in South Dakota. More than half a million people are expected to attend. What are your concerns? Well, anytime we bring a group of people like that together, they are going to spend time indoors. It's just a matter of whether in the bars, the tattoo parlors, or the casinos. And as we saw last year with Sturgis, we actually had a substantial number of cases tied to Sturgis that then were brought home uh, to their various states. And then we saw more transmission in those states from the people who came back from Sturgis. So we have every reason to believe that this year is going to be uh, just as bad, if not worse. And on top of it right now, as you know, people are really feeling pretty well done with this virus in many locations of the country. The fact of the matter is the virus isn't done with us. We have state fairs that are about to be held that will uh, bring in two million people to various locations. We have lots of festivals that are being held this year. So this is the month, I think, right now of these events that are going to unfortunately occur at the same time that this virus is surging. Let me ask you about the Biden administration's plan to prioritize authorizing a booster shot for immunocompromised individuals. Uh, people wonder when they're going to be able to get their shots. How soon do you think this should happen? Well, we have a conflict going on right now that is normal, natural, and unfortunate. And what I mean by that is that uh, just uh, two days ago, the World Health Organization put out a plea for a moratorium on any booster shots around the world uh, because of the fact countries like ours that have had two doses available for virtually everyone, whereas of the 6.4 billion people living in low- and middle-income countries, less than 1 to 2 percent have had access to vaccine at all. And so the world is asking us not to do booster shots inside the country, those of those individuals who are still susceptible because they haven't had an adequate response to the first two shots are begging for their booster shot. So we've got this tension going on. I'm not sure how it will ultimately be decided. Someday, there's no question in my mind, boosters will be given. Uh, and the question is just how soon that that's going to happen. Doctor, you said something the other day that got my attention. These are your words. This virus will find you. It will infect you eventually. It made the hair stand up on the back of my neck because you said it with such certainty. Can you elaborate a little bit on that and why it's so really scary for children? Well, Gail, as you know, this virus has only continued to uh, become more and more transmissible or more infectious. Uh, over the course of the last 18 months, we've had these mutations occur, uh, and each one of them, unfortunately, uh, related to transmission, has only made the virus more infectious. Now we have a situation where, as you're seeing, you can go for months in a given location with little activity, and then you see these big surges occur. And so what happens, people feel like they're out of the woods. You know, mm -hmm. I keep telling people, don't think you can run out the game game clock. It's not going to happen. Ultimately, this virus will keep circulating until it finds you. And I think the story that you had on just before this one on the forest fire is basically a, a, a one of great similarities. Th these fi this fire will find that those trees, that forest to burn eventually. That's what this virus is going to do with us as humans. That is frightening. That's a visual. Uh, yeah, it is yeah. indeed. Uh, Dr. Michael Osterholm, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.